What about boys? Uh, I've got two. In addition to my girl, doctor, do the boys need it? And if so, why? I have a fun story about that, actually. Um, so I was I was already a pediatrician for several years when the HPV vaccine came out. And um, my aunt, who is also a physician, but but not a pediatrician, called me at the time. So if you remember, HPV was only licensed for women and girls initially, and later boys were added on. And so she called me sort of in between time when her two boys were, I think, around you, your boy's age. And she was like, should I give this to my sons off label? And I was like, I think you should, because I'd already seen a lot of the data, you know, on the on the safety and efficacy in men from the trials. And I was like, you know, I knew already that men got HPV related cancers and that the vaccine looked safe and effective for them. So um, I told her to do it. I, she ended up being very happy she did. I vaccinated my boys when they were 12, actually. And, you know, these days, um, men are account for 42% of the HPV related cancers that are diagnosed. So wow. it's like 92% of anal cancer, 63% of penile cancer. That's, that's, that these are HPV related. So there's other causes of penile cancer. Um, 89% of oral, 89% of oral and oral pharyngeal cancers are, are HPV related now. Mm, my gosh. I mean, that's, that's pretty persuasive, but the, is, is the response to that alley that the overall numbers are low? Well, that gets into absolute risk reduction versus relative risk reduction. So yes, that's one concern. The other one that I have um, as a mother of boys is who vaccinated her boys because I was back in my pre-COVID trust, you know, trust the FDA and the CDC. And that's a place, frankly, I'd like us to get back to. Dr. Walsh and I were just talking about, you know, how that is probably the biggest problem um, that we have is, is loss of trust. Um, but I don't think that there's enough data out there for us to really understand what the risks are for boys, um, because most mm -hmm. understandably, most of the emphasis has been on girls in the trials. So I mm -hmm. I would have to say I, I'm undecided there. Um, I want to take a call. We've uh, Let's see. Hold on a second. We've got Amanda calling in from Oklahoma, and she's got a question for you. Amanda, hi. What's on your mind? Hi. Thanks for taking my call. And honestly, I can't even believe I'm calling in to spare uh, share my health on national radio, but <laughs> we're all doing uh, it. Just kind of listening. I know, right. Just kind of listening to this conversation. I want to add a different angle. So, um, I was married for 22 years. My husband was my high school sweetheart. I'd never been with anybody else. And I went through a divorce and lo and behold, at my very next, uh, pap smear, I had HPV and, um, clearly it was either given to me during my marriage or, Maybe my husband, I, I know he had another partner before me, and maybe the stress of the divorce, you know, caused it to be active. Whatever the case, it was the most aggressive kind. And um, I had to have a hysterectomy. Oh. Uh, it actually did not take it all away. I still had vaginal HPV. Thank goodness, after about a year, that cleared up. I mean, I was like, gosh, we, we can't take my vagina out, you know. <laughs> um, any, anyway, um, when I see, so I have the HPV vaccine. I was... Um, nearing my 44th birthday, she crammed that third dose in because I believe as an adult, you get three doses. Yep. And um, I'm grateful to have had it. I had zero issues. And when I see moms on Facebook posts that they don't want their daughters to have it, I have to tell you, I cringe because I thought I would be with one person my entire life. Mm. And if that had happened to me at a younger age and I had to have a hysterectomy, I wouldn't be able to have kids. And I'm just kind of curious the doctor's thoughts and what she's seen. Like, is this a trend? You know, um, again, something I never thought I'd have to deal with. Well, oh, thank you for telling us that story and uh, and raising the question. These are these are good points from somebody who's lived it. Uh, Dr. Walsh, what do you think? Yeah, so a lot of times, you know, by the time we are diagnosed with HPV, we have no idea when we were exposed because, as you pointed out, it, it can kind of come out, you know, many years later. And um, and the and the other thing is, like I said before, you can really lead a very conservative life and and still be exposed because you you know you're sort of at the mercy of anyone your partner was with before you and um things take years and years to emerge and so that's why like having given this vaccine for you know 17 or whatever years now and I, I mean my patients i feel like my patients are very communicative with me even like the babies who get fevers after their routine childhood vaccines i i hear about it my patients tell me what's up and so i definitely i mean yes one day in the office and it is anecdotal but 20 years of experience you know giving this vaccine has given me really great confidence in the safety um being 
totally honest with people. Yes, the syncope is an issue, a minor one, you know, pretty much solvable by having the patient lie down when they get the vaccine. But that's why in my mind, I view this vaccine as a home run, because if we can catch kids before they're exposed, boys and girls, we can really pre- prevent a lot of problems, I think. Mm. Let me, let me thank you so much, Amanda, for calling. And I, I hope you stay well. Lo- love that you listen to the show. Like many people, I am trying to eat healthier these days, and that's why I love good olive oil. When I've been making my salad dressings, I've been doing that. That's the one thing I'll do. I I can cook that. (laughs) I have found that the difference between the olive oil, like if you use an old one, an unfresh one, you can taste it big time. This matters. Good in the field of olive oil means fresh, okay? Olive oil packs the most flavor and healthiest nutrients when it's fresh from the farm. But that's the problem with the supermarket olive oils. They're not fresh. They can sit on that shelf for many, many months. You have no idea how long growing stale. This is why I like my olive oil direct from small award-winning farms, thanks to a guy named TJ Robinson, also known as the olive oil hunter. When I tasted TJ's farm fresh oils, I fell in love with their vibrant grassy flavors. They're delicious on salad, veggies, pasta, meat, fish, you name it. As an introduction to his fresh pressed olive oil club, TJ is willing to send you a full size $39 bottle of one of the world's finest artisanal olive oils for just $1 to help him cover shipping. Best of all, there's never a commitment to buy anything, and you can cancel your membership at any time. Get your free $39 bottle for just $1 in shipping and taste the difference freshness makes. Go to harvestfreshnow.com, harvestfreshnow.com for a free bottle and pay just $1 in shipping, harvestfreshnow.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.